Did you know that research suggests up to 80% of your immune system relies on a healthy gut? The people at Young Health do, which is why they've developed Probimmune, a liquid probiotic that promotes intestinal health and contains a unique blend of bacteria not found in 99% of other probiotics. Probimmune is easy to use, easy to travel with, and does not require refrigeration. Right now, our listeners get 50% off their first order of Probimmune. That's a $34.95 bottle of Probimmune for just $17.48 plus shipping and handling. Just go to Probimmune.com, P-R-O-B-I-M-U-N-E.com and use promo code SMART at checkout to get 50% off today the podcast where we talk to smart people but not necessarily done by smart people that is an awesome question this one goes down probably on one of my top five hey i like nutrition i like to eat food this is the coolest thing ever we're gonna do this forever i wish i paid more attention in that class you know i'm gonna be honest i don't understand that as a man i just i don't get it welcome to to smartpeoplepodcast.com Hello and welcome to Smart People Podcast, conversations that satisfy your curious mind. Chris Stemp here, and thank you so much for joining us. You're going to enjoy this one today, guys. We are bringing back on former guest Jonathan Levy. Jonathan appeared on episode 167 almost two years ago, and the responses to him being on the show were incredible. So at that time, Jonathan was telling us about his best-selling online course on Udemy, And he was also teaching us about some speed reading skills and how to become a super learner. We also talked a lot about being an entrepreneur. So if you want to go check that out, it's episode 167. Well, why are we having Jonathan back? A few reasons. First, I've grown to know Jonathan over the past couple of years. He's brilliant. His business is taking off and he has a new course that I thought would be great to to offer to Smart People Podcast listeners such as yourself. I'm going to let him go into his new course, but I really want to have him on because the response to the first time he was on was so great. Hundreds of people bought his online course, and the new one he has is leaps and bounds ahead of that, as you'll hear in this episode. Jonathan is an entrepreneur and an expert in speed reading and advanced memorization. His courses have been taken by tens of thousands of people around the world. And I just thought, hey, what better group to bring it to than you guys who want to learn more, want to retain it, and want to strengthen their brains. I'm going to let the interview do the talking. We cover it all here. And if you want more, again, you can check out episode 167. We mentioned this in the episode, but if you do want a free trial of Jonathan's new course, you can go to jle.vi slash SPP. His name is Jonathan Levy, so it's jle.vi slash SPP, like Smart People Podcast. All right, so here it is, an interview with Jonathan Levy as we talk about how to optimize your memory and introduce you to his amazing new course. Enjoy. Jonathan, my friend, it is so good to have you back on the show. Thanks for coming. It's good to be back, Chris. How are you doing? I'm good, man. You know, a lot, not only has a lot changed since we last spoke, but it was a while ago. I think it was almost, it was like almost a hundred episodes ago. So you're talking, I should have looked at the timestamps, but I don't know, a year and a half, two years. Yeah, it's, it's been a long time and a lot has definitely changed, I'm sure, on both our sides. First of all, for the listener, we talk about it a little bit in the intro, but we have on the show Jonathan Levy, and we had recorded a previous interview, which I'll pull up and get a number for you for you guys, but um, where we discussed a lot of stuff. You, you, you crushed it on Udemy. You kind of were one of the top course producers in the world. You want to just give like a one-minute thing? Just a recap of where you came from? Absolutely. I'll even take that one minute and kind of go a little bit what's changed since then. So basically, I'm an entrepreneur, lifelong entrepreneur, uh, always struggled in school, had some learning disabilities and kind of was the problem kid in class. 
I discovered entrepreneurship at kind of a very, very early age, and it allowed me to kind of find something that I was good at that I didn't need to necessarily sit in a classroom for. Uh, struggled. I was on medication most of my young adult life, kind of just to be able to sit through classes and kind of get through the academic experience. Uh, fast forward, sold the business, graduated, went to went to apply to business school, got into this really great business school and found myself uh, needing to be able to read and learn much faster. I knew that my kind of really crappy learning skills were not going to cut it the way that I'd kind of forced them to cut it in undergrad. I was doing this condensed MBA program. I was very fortunate to meet two people who were specialists in the field of accelerated learning who tutored me in accelerated learning. So what is that? Speed reading, memory, enhanced kind of... Uh, tackling of the learning process. And fast forward about a year from then, I built an online course, kind of licensing their intellectual property. And that went on, as you said, to be one of the top online courses uh, on a platform called Udemy. What's, I guess, major difference since we last spoke is I, I kind of listened back and realized that last time we spoke, I was still looking for this new startup idea and I was kind of flying all over the world flying to you know Africa, flying to Asia, trying to find these really exciting startup opportunities. And it kind of hit me like, this is the startup opportunity. So now full-time I teach courses. Uh, I took a page out of your book, Chris, and started my own podcast, which has been doing really well and published uh, two books in the last two years, year and a half. So yeah, I'm doing this full-time and, and we've now reached about 70,000 people in 186 countries with this accelerated learning program. Yeah, and I gotta say, I mean, I remember going through your initial course and if any of you guys want to look at or listen to our last interview it was episode 167 by the way that was november 24th 2014 so again oh, wow. almost almost two years yeah here's why we're having jonathan on the show today just to let the listeners know this is a subject that if you listen to the show you will be interested in i can make that <laughs> gross assumption because the show is all about learning there is there's no ifs ands or buts if you want to listen to a show that's specific on any topic, you can go elsewhere. This is the one on learning and expanding your mind. Well, what is the point of expanding your mind if you can't remember it, if you can't <laughs> soak it in? And so I want to have you back on because, you know, you and I, we talk all the time. Jonathan's helped me with things. I've helped him. He's got his new podcast. It's great. Uh, but you have a new course. And I just felt... You know, if we if we did this podcast for years and decades and didn't help people soak it up, it'd be doing a disservice. So the first, just touch on this new course, and then we're going to talk about what is the memory aspect specifically. Yeah. So what I realized is the course that I built and that I we talked about last time mm -hmm. uh, was well, essentially, you know, the funny thing about accelerated learning is I practice what I preach, right? And I've learned so much about the topic in the last three years that I've been teaching the material. As you can imagine, you know, I talk to people who have dyslexia and I learned something about that. I do research on my own. I obviously interview, I've interviewed about a hundred of the world's top experts in learning, health, nutrition, exercise. So I'm constantly learning. And what I realized is like, hey, I gotta update this thing. It, it had to be updated, it had to be improved. Things had to be clarified. So we ended up doing uh, everything from the ground up, rewrote the entire thing from scratch, uh, tackled the things that were unclear to people, expanded on the things, you know, that I've developed and that other people have developed. So for example, recently, for the first time ever, an American won the U World Memory Championship, which is unheard of because they usually come in like 10th place. Uh -huh. So I had a good friend of mine who's the four-time USA Memory Champion come in talk to us about like how the hell did the Americans beat the Chinese and the Germans and the British who are all so much more advanced at mnemonic techniques and memory sport. And, you know, I wanted to include that in the course. I wanted to include like, how can you use the things that are cutting edge in 2016 that are being used to memorize anything? And essentially I wanted to create a course, which was the absolute best that I can offer. No holds barred you know, no expense spared, no question too laborious to answer. Uh, and I think that's what we've done. So yeah, that's a little bit on kind of the, the promotional side of it. But essentially, you know, we like to say that it's the best accelerated learning course that money can buy. Right. And, uh, and just the amount of stuff that we've added that I don't think I even knew three years ago 
some of the stuff that we're teaching today. So it's constantly evolving. It's constantly changing. And, and I think that that's like a testament to just how well the techniques work. Right. And you and I talked about this offline. Our, our listeners know this. We don't really sell things on the show. I mean, we have some sponsors. Sometimes we say, hey, use Amazon. But like, we don't really sell things. And it's because it's part of who I am. I just authentically don't want to be any type of salesman. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's bad. But when you and I talked, it's like, look, this is something that will just increase the the rate at which you can get to where you're trying to go and the information you're taking in. So because you and I have had a lot of dialogue, tell the audience, like, what's a little bit of, of the syllabus? And then we'll again, we'll dig into some specifics. Well, sure. So it, I'll give it in kind of such a way that it, it, it doesn't feel like we're we're pitching the course so much. Yeah, but yeah. Essentially, what we do is it, it, the first big assumption here is people don't understand how to use their memory. I mean, we have evolved over the last two and a half million years. And I can tell you that <laughs> the way that we're using our memory, the way that we're reading is not the way our minds were evolved to be used. We, we were evolved to hunt, to gather. So visual information is much more powerful than reading something in a book. And you say, okay, great. But all the information that I want to learn right now is in books. And that's no problem. But you can rejigger the way that you're learning and, and change it so that you're taking advantage of these evolutionary cues. For example, uh, visual memory. Most of us don't have a highly trained visual memory, but if you think about your paleolithic ancestor, think about the information that's most memorable, most important from a survival perspective. It's pictures. It's remembering locations. It's remembering what did those berries look like that made everyone so sick. It's remembering where the winter food storage is. Uh, it's remembering what rival tribes look like. So visual information is hugely important for us. And then the next thing is a lot of us try and tackle learning challenges from this kind of like, okay, this is an all new topic. And what we need to do is actually trick the brain. There, there's two centers in the brain called hippocampi, typically called the hippocampus, but actually you have two of them. And its sole focus is, well, not sole focus. It has a lot of functions, but its primary function is to say, what is this? Why do I care? And should I remember it? And if you've ever seen that movie Inside Out, the uh, Pixar movie, where in the middle mm -hmm. of the night, the girl goes to sleep and these little like green gremlins go around with a vacuum and they're like, okay, what's this? Uh, my little pony knowledge. Do we need this? We don't need this. Get rid of it. Uh, that actually happens in the brain. And so the, the entire first component of what we teach, 60% of what we teach in the course is how to use your memory. It's the manual that you are never given for your brain. And we talk about neural networks. We talk about synapses. We talk about for this, you know, the people who are interested in the science, we go into like what's actually happening in your brain when you learn something, how can you do it more effectively? And for the non-science people, we give all kinds of, you know, metaphors and stuff like that and make it really fun and really enjoyable. And, and I'm a firm believer, Chris, that if you don't know how something works, I don't think you can adequately use it. And that's why, you know, anytime I teach someone to, to drive a manual car, I'm like, okay, this is the clutch. Here's what's actually happening when you press the clutch. And I think, you know, very few of us have an actual understanding, like what is happening when you create a new memory and what's happening when you forget? Why are you forgetting? So that's the first component. And then once we build that infrastructure out, we, uh, we teach people speed reading, which allows them to just cram information at a much higher rate, as we talked about in the last interview. And then once we've done all of that, we talk about systems and infrastructure for long-term storage. So no matter how good of a memory champ you are, and you know, I've talked to three out of the four people who've won the world championships or the U S championships rather in the last few years. And no matter how good you are, you still need to review, but you have to review in an intelligent way to convince the brain that this information is relevant. It's pertinent. It's useful. It's important. It needs to be ready for random access. So that's essentially what we teach. And, and, you know, it's not rocket science. It is neuroscience, but it's super approachable stuff that really anyone can learn. And, and essentially, I mean, the gist of it is those two things, right? Visual memory and powerful techniques to connect your knowledge to pre-existing knowledge so that the brain is tricked into thinking this stuff is hugely important. Well, and I remember you saying a long time ago when we first met, because I tried different speed reading techniques and you were like, look, everyone misses the most critical part, which is memory. 
even right. if you read it and comprehend in the moment, but don't retain, what's the point? And that's exactly. when I realized, well, okay, you must know what you're talking about because it's not, that's not just selling a speed reading idea, which again, I remember taking classes, just crazy stuff. And then you approach it differently. Well, and I'm also not like, I, I'll admit, and, and I've never really talked about this. Like I'm not the, the hugest speed reader really. Like there are a lot of people out there who are like, Oh, I'll teach you to read 1500 words a minute. Like, no, I actually, I don't think the average person can learn to read 1500 words a minute. I've met people who read 2000 words a minute, but I think the average person can really aspire to get 700, 800 words a minute. And there's actually studies that have been done. A lot of people like to send me studies like, you know, disproving quote unquote speed reading where they're like a recent study showed that you can only process words 600 to 800 words per minute. I'm like, yeah, dude, that that's what I've been saying for the last few mm-hmm. years. Like anyone who tells you they're going to teach you to read 1200 words a minute reliably. I, I don't know. I would, I would distrust that person, but I can definitely teach you how to read 600 words a minute. And I can almost certainly teach you how to read 700, 800. And just to put that into perspective, your average college graduate reads 250 words a minute. That's exactly so what I was going to ask. What is the right, average? Yeah. Think about like what would happen if you read even twice as fast, much less three times. And, and keeping in mind, of course, that comprehension stays where it is or goes higher. So, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that I always read 800 words a minute. I don't, but I usually average about 600 words a minute. So when I'm reading something, I'm reading it two and a half times faster than your average college grad. And now a quick break for this week's sponsor. Did you know that research suggests up to 80% of your immune system relies on a healthy gut? The people at Young Health do, which is why they've developed ProBimmune, a liquid probiotic that promotes intestinal health and contains a unique blend of bacteria not found in 99% of other probiotics. Probimune's industry-leading fermentation process ensures the largest number of good bacteria are delivered alive in the gut. After all, it's not about how many billions of bacteria are in a probiotic, it's about how many survive the digestive process. Probimune is easy to use, easy to travel with, doesn't require refrigeration, and it's great for the whole family. Right now, our listeners can get an exclusive offer of 50% off your first order of Probimune, a 30-day supply that's normally $34.95 for just $17.48 plus shipping and handling. All you have to do is go to www.probimune.com. That's www.probimune.com and use the promo code SMART at checkout to receive 50% off your first order of Probimune. That's www.probimune.com P-R-O-B-I-M-U-N-E dot com and use our promo code SMART to get 50% off today. And now back to this week's episode. You know, one of the things whenever I hear people talk about uh, self-improvement or take this class or do this thing or blah, blah, I always hear, well, anyone can do it. And of course, I want to hear that, but I sometimes don't believe it. So what does it mean? Like, what will it take? What do people need to know they're getting themselves into and, totally. and, and how will they see or feel some progress, which is really important? Yeah. So as far as the anyone can do it thing, there are some people who will benefit from the course, but will not be able to take full advantage. Uh, about 2% of people have something called aphantasia. It's essentially, uh, I don't want to call it a disorder, but a condition where you're actually not able to visualize. So if you if I have you close your eyes right now and I say, picture your mother and nothing comes up, I mean, not even a, a hazy picture, uh, you might have aphantasia. Now, we have had students that we've been able to train out of it who've been able to, and we're talking months, if not years of, of daily practice, we've been able to train them to visualize, which has so many benefits outside of just memory, but is also a huge boon if you're trying to improve your memory. And all memory sport all memory, mnemonic techniques, everything, it's all based on visualization. So whether you go to me or you go to, you know, some of the great guys like Harry Lorraine or Tony Buzan who've been around since the 1950s, we're all teaching the kind of same stuff. I always like to say, like, I aspire to be those guys for the internet generation, you know, because they were writing books, not online courses. In any case, um, and of course, not to compare myself to Tony Buzan in any sense of the word, uh, but So that, that's the first thing is, is almost anyone can do it. And if people are wondering like, you know, what, 
what is this stuff? How does it work? Uh, how will I know that it's working? Well, I'd, lo- I'd love to have your audience go through an exercise, which is close your eyes. And you actually probably don't even have to close your eyes, to be completely honest with you. If you're driving, please don't close your eyes. <laughs> but go into your childhood home, whether your parents sold it 20 years ago or you still live there, and then go into your parents' bedroom and then picture the nightstand on your mother's side of the bed. And I want you to try and remember what was on that nightstand. And for most people, 98% of people should be able to go, oh, it was X. And I've done this with hundreds of people. I've done this in auditoriums with 250 people. And they always go, yeah, 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 there was a red telephone, da 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 so on. And then I ask, well, how, when was the last time you were in that house? Oh, my parents sold that house in 1988. I go, exactly. So that's a pretty incredible feat of memory, right? And you have to ask yourself, like, how and why does my brain know that? And by the way, it knows that for probably every classroom you were ever in and every restaurant that you frequent and most of the hotels that you've stayed in. If I say your trip to Cancun in 2013, what side of the room was the bed on? You know. And I think that's just remarkable and it's a testament to exactly this, that your brain is really good at remembering visualization, visual memory, and where things are, locations. And and this has been known for 2,200 years. So basically what I want to teach people is how do you transform, say, you know, there's 14 countries that border China. How do I create a visual symbol similar to that red telephone on your mother's nightstand? And then how do I put it in a physical space? And we don't use the physical space for everything because it's, to be honest with you, overkill. But if you're memorizing a speech or you want to remember the order of the presidents of the United States, or you want to remember the social security numbers of 25 of your employees, so on and so on and so forth, and you need absolutely 100% perfect memory. I mean, this is the way that I memorize my TED Talk. Go room to room with a symbol for each concept. Uh, And that's what we teach, creative ways to create visual symbols for anything you want to learn. So, you know, I read a Malcolm Gladwell book. I have a visual symbol, uh, and I can take you right into that visual symbol where it's the example of the the guy selling the device that cuts up a pineapple. And I remember this seven years later in exact detail, everything that I wanted to remember about that book because I have these visual symbols. I don't remember the words that he said. I don't, I didn't bother to remember the name of the guy selling the device on the boardwalk, but I remember exactly where it was in that book. And I remember the exact takeaway that I wanted to remember. And I can say that about probably 150 books that I've read in the last four or five years. You know why I love that? I, I, my, I wrote down, my next question was going to be, as you were talking, how do we utilize this memory technique, this visualization in reading? And what you essentially just, you know, blew my mind open to is you're not trying to remember necessarily all the words you read. You're kind of reading it really quickly using your speed reading techniques, gathering an image, an idea, and then setting that in stone. So for whatever's on that page, that paragraph, that chapter, you now have forever. Is that kind of the idea behind it? Totally. Although I, I do want to say as a caveat, a lot of people, like for example, I'll memorize you know 250 names or something like that at a conference and then someone will see me a year later and they'll be like, ha ha, you're the memory guy, do you remember my name? And I'll be like, no, <laughs> here's why. Uh, a big part of the whole super learning methodology is something called spaced repetition. So it turns out there's something called a curve of forgetting, which means if I tell you something, Uh, and you don't use one of these techniques, you're going to forget it in 10 minutes, like a foreign language word. We've all had that experience where you ask someone like, how do I say hello in your language? They tell you and then you forget it immediately. Uh, If you use these techniques, you'll remember it for a day instead of 10 minutes. But after that day, you still need to review it. And that's essentially because every time you review it, you're telling the hippocampus like, hey, Remember this, this is important. The thing is that what we do is is we do it in a smart way. So for books and, and big points, it, it won't be every single day. I don't expect you to read over your highlights of a book every single day. But I do tell my students, like, every time you finish a book, go over to the last couple books. And, and we have a methodology for highlighting and getting your highlights somewhere where you can conveniently review them and then 
we teach people about this software called Anki, which allows people to essentially create an algorithm for how quickly you forget, and then it will remind you. So like, I've got about 1,200 or 1,800 words in Russian in the system, and it'll be like, hey, today is the day that you forget the word uh, dolny or something like that. Like today, statistically speaking, is the day that you will forget that. So it's it's basically taking this physical limitation that we all have. And by the way, like given enough time, you'll forget almost anything. Like given enough time, we've all had that experience where you're like, what was the name of that kid? He was my best friend in elementary school like 20 years ago. Oh my God, I don't remember. How can I not remember? Uh, and it's just, it comes down to space repetition. Things you don't use you lose. Your brain is an efficiency machine. It's really, really good at getting rid of, because it, it takes maintenance, right? Our brain is 2% of our mass, consumes 20% of our energy. So it really, really needs to constantly be pruning back neural connections, synaptic connections, uh, in order to be efficient. If you want to beat that, you just have to use the knowledge. And I'm sure the next question people are wondering is like, isn't there some limit? There is, but it's 2.2 petabytes is the known limit, which is to put into perspective about one sixth of all the data the NSA has on all of us. Mm. So it's like, it's a lot of freaking data. I mean, you can remember so much information. And by the way, the more you remember, the more you're able to remember. If, so for example, People always ask me, well, like, you're learning your fourth language. Don't you ever get confused? Don't you ever have bleed? And, yeah, sometimes, like, words come faster to me in Hebrew than in English or they come faster to me in Spanish than in Russian. But most of the time, it's kind of like uh, think about to kind of come up with a metaphor on the fly. Like, essentially, my brain is is now in such a condition that I have so many different things that I can peg onto. So think, like, if you have a flat surface or completely smooth surface, you're trying to get something to stick. Whereas if you have this wrinkled surface and those wrinkles are all these different sounds, all these different concepts. So the more I learn, the more I'm able to latch on to pre-existing knowledge. And so when I learn piano, I can connect it to some concept from guitar. When I learn acro yoga, I can connect it to some concept from CrossFit. And it really is like the more you learn, the more you're able to learn and the more easily you're able to learn. I want to plug something in there because it, it helped me, especially if learning languages is your thing. Uh, my son goes to a nanny who is from Colombia, and, and she speaks – all she speaks is Spanish. That's it, right? She has almost zero English. And um, and it was something I really wanted because I thought that would be cool for him, and, and it just worked out. She's a neighbor. Long story short. He comes home now, and he knew what the word water was in Spanish before he did in English. So he would say agua just over and over, and right? And essentially how, <laughs> it was, awesome. yeah, how it was explained to me is because he's so young learning this, he will now look at water and see it as either water or agua. He won't think of it as in English it's water, in Spanish it's agua. He will just look at it as having two names. The same way it doesn't take effort – to think of money and see the word cash or, you know, bling or change or whatever, all the different synonyms, it just is. And so I think kind of what you're saying is you've conditioned part of what you're saying in the language part, you've conditioned it so that you just see things as they are in those languages to some extent. Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that because recently I've caught myself thinking in other languages, mm -hmm. which is <laughs> and dreaming in other languages, which, I, you know, I've spoken two languages all my life and, and in, you know, three languages for half my life and four languages for the last few years. Uh, but I, I catch myself like thinking in different languages, which is totally strange. And it's it's also really just an interesting side point. You have different personalities in every language that you speak, mm. which I think is so fascinating. But basically, you're kind of creating this alternate dimension in your mind, exactly like you said, where in this dimension, water is agua. Uh, and in this dimension, you know, I'm more flirtatious or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's that's like a super interesting thing and where so many people – uh, go wrong with languages is they translate. And so and you can see it on someone's face. And I happen to live in a country where I don't even know what percentage, but a huge percentage of people speaking the local language are not first 
you know, it's not their mother tongue. So we have a huge immigrant population from Russia and France and Argentina and the U.S. And so every single day I see good and bad examples of people speaking not in their native tongue. And you can see it on someone's face when they're translating and you can hear it in their grammar. And the goal is really to get to a point where you can just express yourself and think in that language fluidly. And that's why all the language learning experts that you talk to, I mean, the really, really advanced guys, the ones speaking 30, 40 languages, uh, not 40, sorry, 20, 30 languages, uh, they're advocating never translating, right? You, you never, you basically speak from day one is the goal wow. and don't translate the language. I love that. And I want to, I want to touch on another thing that you mentioned in, about the wrinkles. What that opened up for me is increasing the efficiency of your memory, right? Just the, the way it does things, the way it remembers, the way it works, isn't just to trap information. It's to grow as a human, at least as you explained it. Because, see, th these are all things I want to work on. Like, what you're opening up for me is this idea of, Chris, you have all these things you want to do, right? You have all these things you want to do. And if you can have more experiences and retain them, it will increase that creativity. It will increase that opportunity, that ability. And I never looked at memory that way. Right. Yeah, we tend to, we for some reason, we disconnect learning and memory in this weird way. I talked to Harry Lorraine, who's been around, you know, since 1955, he's been like the memory guy. I mean, he, he created the renaissance of memory enhancement. And he told me the story about how he went into school districts and started pitching them on, hey, like, let's integrate memorization techniques into schools. And all the teachers and all the administrators were like, no, 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 no memorization. We go for learning, not memorization. We would never want our kids to just memorize things. And, it, you know, I'm quoting him where he was basically like, okay, so you teach kids new vocabulary words in sixth grade. They need to expand their vocabulary to be creative writers. What, how do those words get in between those ears? You know, and you teach kids multiplication tables and you teach kids foreign languages and you expect them to recall historical dates and presidents and wars. And that's all memory. I mean, there's different kinds of memory, of course, the memory that you're going to use in PE class and the memory that you're going to use even in music class versus English class are very, very different. But the point is, like, do you have this toolkit to take new information and make it your own and put it into your neurons in such a way that you can access it and keep it there. Right. And, and that's, that's what it all comes down to. And, and by the way, just to touch on that, another thing, like I really love to take things that are quote unquote very hard. Right. And I uploaded a bunch of videos on Instagram. Like I, I picked up a, a keyboard, like a piano keyboard and everyone's like, Oh, it's super hard to, you know, memorize all the scales. It takes so much time to learn music. I'm like, no, it doesn't like come up with a method, link it to preexisting knowledge turn it into something visual, like the system works over and over and over and over again, whether it's Russian or acro yoga or learning how to write copy. Uh, there are very few things that I've found that I haven't been able to apply it to. I'm, I'm always looking though. So if someone in the audience has some crazy idea of something that I can learn where memory techniques are not going to give me an unfair advantage, I would really love to hear about it. We will have them. What's your, what, where do you hang out most? Like uh, what, social media, email, website, what? Where should they hit you? Oh, I'm all over. I'm all over. Uh, people can find all my stuff uh, and learn about like my podcast and everything at jle.vi. Okay. That's kind of like a one-stop shop, has the podcast, courses, books, uh, everything. And there's also contact form and all my kind of social media there as well. I was going to say, so, cause I was referencing that in, in terms of if they do have a thought, where would be the best place and would it be social or just go to the website and take it from there essentially? Uh, yeah, they can go to the website or they can reach out to me on Twitter. I'm entrepreneur and the newer is spelled N E W E R. Now let's take a break for a message from our sponsor Periscope. Okay. Calling all nerds, calling all nerds. You all know my story. I used to work in finance, which seems like a lifetime ago. And there were things about it I didn't like. And one of the things that was so frustrating was the speeds at which all of the data would come together and be compiled in my spreadsheets. Well, luckily, those days are gone. Periscope data is the ultimate tool for fast and flexible data visualization. Why run slow queries on old spreadsheet data when Periscope data allows you to run, visualize, and share analysis over billions of data rows in seconds? 
That's billions with a B. You can turn query results into vibrant charts with one click. Go from SQL queries to actionable insights and dashboards in seconds. Plus, there's no setup cost or time. With Periscope, you can get trialing and delivering insights as soon as you plug in your credentials. No giant statements of work, no top-heavy meetings. Ah, it sounds so beautiful. Periscope Data is a powerful and intuitive tool that will bring your SQL analysis to the next level. Get a free trial today by going to www.periscopedata.com slash smart. That's periscopedata.com slash smart. Now back to the episode. Cool. Well, we're not letting you go yet, so... Um, Rock on. Because what I wanted to do was I wanted to hear... What what do you think is the most fundamental skill that someone could start working on right now to see how they can improve their memory? Just to see, you know what? Anyone can do it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really glad you asked that. So let's start with an easy one, but one that's really, really important. So I'm a big, big fan of Dale Carnegie. I don't know if you've ever read oh, How yeah. to Win Friends and Influence People. Absolutely. So this was the first book that was given to me when I was 13 years old. And it's the first time I realized that reading books could actually make me a better human being. And I don't mean better, like more successful. I just mean like a, a more fully realized human being who can have more impact on people on this planet. Like I, I it hadn't occurred to me because in school we would read like fiction books and I'd I, I never realized that books could actually make me better as a person. So this book was huge and still is huge for me. And one of the, one of my favorite, favorite chapters, Chris, is uh, learning to use people's names. And Carnegie has this quote, remember that a person's name is the sweetest sound in any language to them. I think that's really important. Like if you aspire to be successful in business, in your personal life, you need to use people's names and you need to remember people's names. So I, I'd love to kind of walk your audience through how I would go about doing that. And essentially, uh, I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but it's the same toolkit. So I meet someone, their name is Christian, right? I'm immediately picturing them with a wreath of thorns around their head, or I'm picturing them turning uh, water into wine or truth be told, kind of the more gruesome, sexual, gory graphic, the more likely I am to remember it. That's mm. kind of just a known fact in mnemonics. Uh, but then if I meet someone named, say, oh, I met someone named Kivanch, which is a Turkish name. Wow. And then, yeah, a really tough one, right? Or actually a friend of mine was told by someone else that he looked like Kivanch. And he's like, hey, can you remember that so we can Google him? He's this Turkish movie star. And I, saw, I said to myself, no problem. How am I going to remember Kivanch? I don't even know what the guy looks like. So I just pictured my friend saying something in Hebrew. And this is where the, you know, the more you learn, the more you're able to learn. There's nothing in English that really sounds like Kivanch. Uh, so I connected it to a phrase, which is Kivanche, which means like, uh, whereas in Hebrew. And then I pictured my friend saying that, like making an argument in a legal courtroom, Kivanche, uh, but you could do it, you know, with all kinds of different things. I could picture Kevin and Shay Carl, um, <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't really matter, but I need to get those sounds into something that I can now visualize. So I can visualize my friend in the courtroom making this statement in Hebrew. Uh, and then I just took that memory and I placed it on the exact physical location where we ran into these two Turkish women, which is on Gordon beach in Tel Aviv by the third palm tree to the right of the beach. And there it is. And it's it's there for the other day. I, I called him up. I'm like, hey, Kivanch, what's going on? He's like, Jesus, how do you remember that? That's pretty you know, So very simple. And, and you can do that with any name, right? I met a guy named Casper, Casper the Friendly Ghost. Uh, I met a girl named Jenny. Jenny was a friend of mine. Like you have so much knowledge that you can connect to. And all you need to do is create these visual symbols. And it works for anything. It works for anyone. It works for foreign words. And, you know, if anyone listening in the audience is like, wait, 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 I don't get it. Of course, this is, you know, something that we take weeks to explain to people in everyday practice and stuff like that. But after a while, you get to the point where there's almost nothing you can tell me, even if it's something I don't understand fully, right? Like I read Stephen Hawking's uh, A Brief History of Time. And I don't really understand this whole light frontier of the black hole thing, but I can describe, like I can draw it for you and I know exactly like what his diagrams look like and I can tell you 
you know, what a quark means to me. And I can tell you, uh, what wormholes are and I, you know, stuff like that. Um, even if it's over my head. So it, it all comes down to like visualize and connect. You know, memory's like a muscle. And there, there's, as you've now opened up for me, there's a number of reasons why it's a muscle to be built. And I can do it with these techniques, utilize them in different places. Some people might want to, you know, might be scientists and need to remember equations. Some people might speak. Some people just need to know names, whatever it is, uh, which will then kind of leak into other areas of life. And specifically, totally. that, that's why this is a precursor to speed reading, which you Bingo. cover in, you know, in depth in this course we're going to talk about. But I know I hear from our listeners, right? We interview an author every week or two, and people usually pick one or two books a month that they want to read oftentimes because of this podcast. I know because I have them. I have 300 half read books sitting next to me. <laughs> it's not because I don't want to read them. It's because I don't read them fast enough to move to the next. And so that's what oh, I'm yeah. really excited about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was reading, I have to admit, like I had a goal to read 52 books this year and then I, I just fell off. But up until like I was, I was keeping up with it until May. So I've read 27 books so far uh, in the last six months wow, or something like that. I need to check. I have a log of every single book that I've read and all that stuff in my notes and stuff like that. But yeah, 27 books since, yeah, something like that. In any case, um, and you know, that that's just a matter of time commitment. The truth of the matter is why have I dropped off? I just burnt out. Like reading right. a book a week, I kind of just, it got to a point where I was like so collecting so much knowledge i ran out of people to talk about it with and i ran because all my friends are like okay great you're reading another book like don't want to hear about it <laughs> right right you well, know but it, it's incredible like how much stuff i learned i basically gave myself a degree in copywriting uh i'm now studying like energetics and reiki and really interesting stuff like that mm -hmm. uh i figured out this whole quantum mechanics thing i don't fully understand it but i now can speak intelligently about it and yeah, you know, I, I tend to go in waves as well, like anyone else. I'm really glad you mentioned that because one of the things I noticed the podcast did for me was it overloaded my inputs. I just, I found myself in constant consumption mode because there's so much fascinating stuff. And if this is your personality, you just, you really, you can lose focus. And so I went on a little bit of a cleanse. I was like, I'm getting rid of everything for the most part, like everything. Yes, I'll still interview one person every other week. But aside from what is necessary for me in terms of information, I'm going to focus on family right now or health and then slowly adding things back in. And I just think it's a it's a good place to kind of end with with you bringing that up that this isn't a you know, you have to force feed it. This is just a tool that you can enjoy in this kind of journey and, and knowledge and soak it in and be a little bit better because of it. Totally. And I want to say that one of the biggest benefits of the course, and this is an example of like how I said, we're always updating the course. This is something that I haven't yet put into the course, but there's so much power in just knowing that your memory will be there when you need it. And you know, it's this whole nocebo effect. Like a doctor can tell you, uh, this is opium, but it doesn't work for people with your blood type and it won't work, you know, or morphine or some really strong drug and it won't work. And I think the same is true. And so many people go around with this mentality of like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I'm going to forget your name in an hour. People have actually told me that. They're like, hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, sorry, I'm going to forget your name. Right, like, yeah. What is that saying, right? So <laughs> I think one of the biggest benefits of studying mnemonics is just having that confidence. Like when someone reads me a phone number, I know I'm going to remember it and I don't have to stress and I don't have to worry about it. Um, I have the opposite issue. I still remember a hundred shekel bill that I had in my wallet six months ago that I decided to remember. Like, <laughs> how do I get that out of there? Or do I even need to get that out of there? Right. You know? Yeah, no, I hear you. Well, we got to get going. But I, I mean, we've talked about it. Give us okay, give us some specifics on the course, what we can expect, the cost and, and most specifically, uh, where to sign up and get that that smart people discount. Yeah. So the first thing is, uh, people can sign up through a special link for listeners of this podcast, they can get a free trial and try it out. It's time unlimited. You don't have to put a credit card in or anything like that. It's just going to take you through the first section 
and they can essentially test their reading speed, check their assumptions, figure out uh, where they are, what their baseline is, and essentially kind of learn a little bit about themselves uh, before the actual course starts, the rest of the course, uh, you know, you do need to enroll in the full course. If they use that link, uh, which is jle.vi slash SPP, we'll know that it came from you guys and they'll get a 10% off discount on the premium masterclass. So the way, uh, so they'll get, it, they'll get 10% off, but they also no credit card required. And w- I didn't know this. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. So there's a free they'll, trial. They'll get a free trial. Oh, sweet. Exactly. There's a free trial. If they want to try it out, it's limited to just the first section of the course, but sure. that's actually quite a bit of material. And then when they, if, and when they decide to upgrade, make sure that they use that link again okay. to go, kind of go back through it and register for the full course and they'll get 10% off. And the course retails at two ninety nine. Uh, so they'll get it for two sixty nine, right? Uh, and just kind of as as a quick heads up to everyone, we do. If you're listening to this after December two thousand sixteen, we do have a policy. Our prices go up every six months. So I apologize if you're listening to this in two thousand seventeen and the price is like three ninety nine or something like that. But at the time of this recording, it is two ninety nine and ten percent off. And thank you. What's the link again? One more time. J-L-E dot V-I slash S-P-P for okay. Smart People Podcast. And we'll put that in the show notes. We'll also send it out to our newsletter because anytime we get something kind of great, we want to make sure they get it. But, you know, you did mention to me the thing about your courses continuing to go up in price. And it's just because primarily, and I think what you told me before is like, you're kind of at some point still giving it away. I mean, I don't know. Right. I've gotten so many lectures, like not to sound like an internet marketer here, but I'm in a mastermind with a bunch of other people doing similar stuff like this. And they're all selling their courses for like four ninety nine to nine ninety nine. Right. And they're all just like yelling at me. They're like, dude, if, if you really want people to take you seriously, like you owe it to your students because like you said, like so many people enroll in a hundred dollar course and then don't take it. But if you spend four ninety nine, you're going to take the course. So, right. I mean, that's something that we do also to reflect the fact that like we have expenses, like our staff is growing and we now have someone dedicated who's doing customer service and helping people with billing inquiries and stuff like that. And obviously, you know, we got to keep the lights on. <laughs> well, and even like you said, I think the, the biggest part is, I mean, I do this in coaching, right? Like, yeah, you could maybe find a coach for super cheaper. I don't know. But you're just going to look at it as a, a friend or somebody to talk. And that's really not the goal. So, if totally. you know, yeah, you can go buy a $15 speed reading book and, and have at it. It's a great place to start. I mean, I, but it's just look, if if you this is part of your career, part of your life, it's it's an investment. Totally. But anyways, I, don't I mean, we do offer, <laughs> by the way, we offer like a payment plan that's like 29 bucks a month. So if people are concerned, like you can enroll, you can unlock the full course for 29 bucks and it's no harm, no foul if it's not for you. But for most people, it's it's really really impactful, you know. And uh, at twenty nine bucks a month, you you really can't you can't lose. Well, and we now have almost two hours of conversation with you here. You, again, as I mentioned, you can go listen to episode one sixty seven. You can listen to this one, Jonathan. You have stuff all over the internet. Go to your website, um, which you know if you want to share that again, go ahead. Yeah, it's just jle dot vi. Jle dot vi, and so you can see. You know what? Uh, this is something I want to I want to learn more about. So Jonathan, again, just want to say thanks. It's always fun to have you on. I'm sure another two years from now, we'll have you back and we'll be doing uh, more of the same, but much better. And so thanks for taking the time. I know you're a busy entrepreneur and, and business builder these days. My pleasure, brother. Thanks so much for having me. All right, man. Have a good one. You too. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that episode with Jonathan Levy. So amazing to have him on a second time. It's really hard to believe that we had him on almost two years ago on episode 167. If you want to learn more about Jonathan, you can head over to his site at jlevy, that's J-L-E dot V-I. And if you want a free trial of Jonathan's new course and 10% off if you purchase, please head over to J-L-E dot V-I slash S-P-P. That's J-L-E dot V-I slash S-P-P. SPP. All right. If you're looking to support the show, please don't forget that we have an Amazon link located at smartpeoplepodcast.com slash Amazon. Any purchase you make through there gives us a nice little kickback at no cost to you. It's one of the easiest ways to support the show. But if you're looking for other free and easy ways to support the show, 
just head over to iTunes, leave a rating, review, comment over there. We absolutely love it when everybody takes time out of their day to do so. If you'd like to reach out to the show for any reason at all, you can shoot us an email at smartpeoplepodcast at gmail.com or message us on Twitter at smartpeoplepod. Well, that's it for Chris and I this week. We've got some great guests coming up, so make sure you stay tuned to all things Smart People Podcast at smartpeoplepodcast.com, and we will see you all next episode. Next episode.